In a park next to the Houses of Parliament in London, there's a statue of a woman called Emmeline Pankhurst. She grew up during a time when women in England couldn't vote. In fact, if it hadn't been for women like Pankhurst, this would never have changed. She was a suffragette and dedicated her entire life to fighting for the right to vote. When Emmeline was 14 years old, she attended a lecture on the women's suffrage movement. If she hadn't gone to this lecture, her life could have been very different. But the meeting inspired her to become a hard-working suffragette. A few years later, when she was 21, Emmeline married a lawyer called Richard Pankhurst. He was also a supporter of women's rights and helped to form various political parties dedicated to fighting oppression. Sadly, he died suddenly in 1898. Emmeline and her daughters, Christabel and Sylvie, continued the struggle for equal voting rights for women. In 1903, they started a group called the Women's Social and Political Union. There were many other suffragette groups in the country at this time, but this was one of the largest and most militant. In 1908, there were big demonstrations for women's rights, but nothing changed. The Pankhursts were very disappointed. Emmeline felt that they would have had more success if they had acted more aggressively. She advocated civil disobedience and called for women to break the law if it was necessary and worthwhile. She organised a demonstration at the Houses of Parliament in London where she was arrested and sent to prison for a month. In 1910, the police arrested 156 women at another demonstration outside the Prime Minister's house in Downing Street. But women still didn't get the vote. Emmeline and Christabel decided that if civil disobedience was to be a success, the group would have to become more violent. A lot of suffragettes rose to this challenge. They weren't violent towards people, but they broke windows and started fires as acts of opposition. Many members of the group were arrested and sent to prison, but that didn't always mean they gave up the struggle. Some women continued to support the cause by going on hunger strike. The suffrage movement was not always popular, and a lot of people were upset by the violent campaign. Emmeline herself spent years hiding from the police. In 1913, a suffragette called Emily Davidson died when she jumped in front of the King's horse at a famous race called the Derby. This drew a lot of attention to the struggle for women's rights, both positive and negative. But in 1914, the First World War started, and the group stopped their campaign in support of the war effort. The war changed attitudes to women, and Emmeline started working with the government. Finally, in 1917, the British government changed the voting law to enable women over the age of 30 to vote. Men could vote at 21. For Emmeline, this was not enough. She persisted in her demands for fully equal rights between men and women. Sadly, she never saw this happen. She died in June 1928 when she was 69 years old. If only she had lived for one more month, she would have seen her lifelong dream come true. In July 1928, the government passed the Representation of the People Act, which finally gave women the same rights to vote as men. The struggle for women's suffrage was one of the most powerful political movements of modern times. It united women from all backgrounds and nationalities and inspired other civil rights movements for years to come. <laughs>